The sun rises over the Mojave as a new day dawns. A day like any other, except for the fact that the sun's rays now illuminate a colour splattered across the wasteland. Crimson. Crimson of the flag staked across the land. Crimson of the uniforms of its new masters. And crimson from the blood of the rival contenders now seeping into the sands. And as the light spreads over this new addition to his empire, Kaiser follows its trajectory west. For like the sun, it's a direction he and his legion will be heading very soon. I have previously made videos on the legion victory in the Mojave and what the long-term goals of Kaiser would be when he conquered the new California Republic. The latter especially was more of a hypothetical thought experiment to examine what the overall plan was for the legion without going into details of how the actual invasion and pacification of the NCR would play out. I should start by saying I don't believe the legion could conquer the NCR. I believe that the points raised in the conversation between the Courier and Legatus Linnaeus about the West being a trap are perfectly sound. I do believe that they could invade and honestly inflict severe damage to the Republic. My contention would be that any victory or loss achieved by either faction in the campaign would be Pyrrhic at best. Now, in the immediate aftermath of a Legion victory in the Mojave, the Legion are stated to occupy all major locations. The inhabitants of the Mojave fall under the Legion's banner, with Kaiser proving to be a peaceful, yet firm lord. The non-enslaved residents of the Mojave would assist in funding further campaigns via the tribute provided to their new overlords. The Legion, being primarily a slave economy, would swell with the number of slaves acquired at the conclusion of the Mojave campaign. The weaponry and supplies gathered from the Mojave would also greatly improve the Legion's fighting capacity. In nearly all previous of their campaigns, they had exterminated tribes so backwards that enslavement had been a blessing upon them but the Mojave would be rich in resources of its former occupants. Former headquarters like Camp McCarran, Nellis Air Force Base, and Vault 3 would provide the Legion with more firepower and weaponry than ever before. And already considered a living deity as the son of Mars, Kaiser's legend among his own troops would reach unparalleled status, as his prophesied victory against their ideological enemy had come to fruition. And with the acquisition of a city worthy of becoming the Legion's capital, Kaiser has finally found his Rome, his next step would be to continue the war against the profligates to truly emulate his historical namesake. The Legion's assault on the New California Republic would start at the Mojave Outpost. It is imagined that at the completion of the war, a high military presence, or at the very least a ranger reconnaissance team would be visible at this location. Its high hills would provide a tactically advantageous view of the battlefield for NCR sharpshooters. And yet, once on top of the hill, the Legion's close combat strengths would outweigh any of the NCR benefits. Consisting of two buildings outfitted with sandbags, it's unlikely any true resistance would be held at the location. The Mojave outpost would be overwhelmed, and the Legion could start their march into the land known as California. The Legion's path into California would take them along the Long 15, where the next theatre of combat would take place. In the events of Lonesome Road, the player character has the option to visit the start of the Long 15 after detonating it with a nuke. The location itself is within eyesight of the Unification Monument found at the Mojave Outpost, indicating it must be a relatively short distance from there. The infrastructure, weaponry and personnel visible in this area provide an insight into the opposition the Legion would face upon their entry to California. For one, the location possesses firing ranges, medical tents and encampments indicating it as a forward military base for the NCR. NCR heavy troopers are seen in abundance with an arsenal of heavy weaponry. Their commanding officer, Colonel Royes, is also shown to be the only member of the NCR capable of wearing power armor without the servos needing to be stripped. Most notably, there are multiple crash vertebrates on site, suggesting a build-up of the aircraft within the area. These combatants would be difficult to attack, but definitely not impossible. Depending on how soon the invasion may be, a stream of refugees escaping the Mojave could have caused disarray in the setup of the camp and deviated some forces from the front. The heavy troopers and Colonel Royes would inflict punishment on the Legion, yet evidence from the Battle of Hoover Dam shows that even power armor can be broken. The vertebrates are obviously the factor some would think could stop the Legion in its tracks, but I imagine Kaiser would have prepared for these. In the Legion victory, one ending depicts Nellis Air Force Base being captured, with the boomers enslaved. Kaiser would know the profligates have vertebrates and is willing to allow his soldiers to use advanced weaponry in the right circumstances. The vertebrates could therefore be blown out of the sky. Even in the instance that the boomers were not invaded and their stockpiles weren't looted, vertebrates aren't invulnerable. 
If the craft seen from Fallout 4 are anything to base this off, then common ballistic weaponry fire would be more than capable to shoot them down. As a side note, I'd make the same case for why the NCR couldn't just drop a bomb on Kaiser, as they'd be loud, easy to spot, and open to attack. Obviously, if the Legion was forced to face such staunch opposition for every step taken on the Long 15, they'd eventually be worn down. I would most likely state that the camp is significantly built up due to being a critical location, rather than being indicative of every battle they'd face in the March West. Despite this, I don't want to give off the impression I think the NCR would be easy to conquer. I think they'd be extraordinarily difficult, and they would fight for every step. Along the Long 15, the Legion would pass through previous pre-war towns, such as Baker, Harvard, and Yermo. The type of resistance they'll be faced at these settlements is purely speculative, as we can either confirm or deny that the towns themselves have been occupied by the NCR. What we can state with certainty is that the Legion's path would take them directly to a crucial target, the Hub. Visited in the original Fallout, the hub is one of the states of the NCR, based in the pre-war town of Barstow. In an effort to lessen the reliance on bottle caps, the NCR established its own currency. This was done by minting gold coins, which were then used to back their paper money. Things went fine for a time, until during their war on the NCR, the Brotherhood raided and destroyed the NCR gold reserves to the point where new gold coins could no longer be minted. This led to NCR citizens rushing to transfer their paper notes for the dwindling reserves of gold, who then discovered it was no longer worth a whole lot. The NCR government eliminated the gold standard entirely, as they were no longer able to exchange these withdrawals and established a fiat currency. Their currency is now based entirely on their paper money, which many in the Republic distrust given the fact that there's nothing actually back in the NCR dollar other than the government's word. On top of this, the exchange rate between NCR dollars to the standard bottle cap is noticeably low, with two and a half NCR dollars being equal to one bottle cap. In response to the NCR government's incompetence, the merchants of the hub reintroduced bottle caps as their standard currency. They were able to inspire faith in bottle caps as a medium of worth by exchanging a standard measurement of water for caps, similar to how gold had previously backed NCR dollars. The NCR economy was therefore able to stabilize, and while they still use their paper money, caps are a trusted backup as a form of currency, all thanks to the hub. Capturing or destroying the hub would therefore deal a major blow to the NCR in an area that they are most vulnerable, their economy. Sure, it might not mean the absolute end of times for their market, but the impact of this would ripple throughout the entire republic. Citizens may suddenly become wary again that their accumulated caps and banknotes may drop in value, and the faith in their government to honour their currency would come into question. The hub is a huge trading center for the nation, with merchants, traders, and caravaneers plying their trade within its halls. A large portion of the caravans that help supply the states of the Republic are organized within the hub. Given the fact that electricity and water now no longer flows from Hoover Dam after the Legion's occupation, disrupting the hub's water merchants would be even more severe to the NCR. It is also worth noting that the hub is essentially one of the only roads out east for military and mercantile expeditions. Between the hub and the Mojave are hundreds of kilometres of dry, arid desert. The hub is a crucial location for caravans to stock up on enough water to even make it through the Long 15 itself. Given its importance, the hub would not go down without a fight. The NCR would have had ample time to prepare a vigorous defence against the approaching Legion. The many disadvantages that they'd faced in the Mojave campaign would be negated given the fact that they'd be fighting on home soil. The NCR Senate would rally to send as many reinforcements as they could to make a stand against the Legion. We've now entered into the realms of pure speculation here, and none of this can ever really be properly verified unless a sequel to New Vegas is ever released, or one of the developers chimes in and says, nope, that's not the way it would go. I ultimately do believe that the Legion could take the hub. The concession I would make to those who disagree would be I don't believe they'd be able to extend any further. Kaiser no doubt would have had Frumentari scouring California prior to his arrival. He'd be aware of the fortifications, infrastructure, and supply lines to expect when besieging the hub. His legionaries would be primed in anticipation for their first real battle out west, with each ready to lay down their lives for the legion. Crucially, I believe that Kaiser may have even enlisted the secret help of certain disgruntled factions within the hub via his emissaries. Raider gangs are confirmed to still be present in the city, with one powder ganger named Dawes confirming he'd run with the toughest gang in the hub. If Dawes is anything to base these individuals off, they'd be undeniably violent and incredibly anti-NCR. 
Kaiser could possibly sway them to his cause with lies similar to the ones he told to the Great Khans, that after they eliminate their bureaucratic overlords, they would be free to rule the hub as their own personal fiefdom. If these gangs rose up against the NCR military when the Legion attacked, the battle lines of the NCR would be thrown into disarray. The technology, resources, and forces of the Legion would be the strongest that they'd ever been after their victory in the Mojave. I believe that it would be an almost titanic clash between the two factions, with extreme losses on both sides. And ultimately, even if the Legion did manage to capture the city and repulse the NCR, the momentum of the campaign would grind to a halt, given the loss of life from the battle. The fate of the hub in the face of a Legion victory could go one of two ways. The NCR would either litter it with explosives similar to Boulder City in order to eliminate as many Legionaries as possible and deny them their prize, or the Legion would occupy the city and plunder it for slaves, supplies and tribute. Yet this is where we enter into the realm of the entire campaign being a Pyrrhic victory. Legatus Lanier states at the Battle of Hoover Dam that the Legion is already overextended trying to capture the Mojave. Their troop numbers would be even more critical given the fact that portions of their forces are occupying the east and the recently captured Mojave. This is not even taken into account their losses from Hoover Dam and any skirmishes along the Long 15. Fresh blood would have had to have been allocated away to bolster their crusade into California but a huge number of these troops would die and aren't returning to refill their posts. Maybe the Legion could still raid smaller settlements like Junktown, Scrappy, or Bullhead City, but any other campaigns against the nearby larger cities of the NCR, such as Dayglow, the Boneyard, or Shady Sands, would end in undeniable defeat. The best option for Kaiser would be to loot the hub, salt the earth, and return back along the Long 15. This would be devastating for the NCR. It may not destroy them entirely, but it would absolutely have long-term effects. The hub was built over the course of 189 years and would not be easily rebuilt after its sacking. This loss of a city that provided financial backing to the nation could also cause NCR citizens to distrust their money again, as previously stated. And unless they discover new routes, their ability to enforce their claims east would be heavily impacted for the foreseeable future. The problem for the Legion is, I'm not sure Kaiser would turn around. It's doubtful he'd be on the front lines, but I likely imagine he'd be leading the campaign from behind. Kaiser is a man who is consumed by the idea that his victory is preordained, that the NCR Senate mirrors the Roman Senate, and he is Caesar reincarnated. A returning hero, given the fact he was born in the NCR, come to set the profligates free in ways they can't even imagine. But all this starts to come apart when the logistics of the campaign unravel any sense of historical inevitability. If he continues the campaign, he and his legion will die. They'll be caught in the very trap that the bear finds itself within. But if he returns home, his myth dies. Maybe not to his men, or maybe at least not straight away, but definitely within himself. It's important to note that he wasn't born Kaiser. Kaiser is more so a persona that Edward Sallow adopted in response to the horrific environment he found himself in out east. His actions up until this point have been based on the idea that he's building a new and better society. Project director Josh Sawyer had stated that Kaiser essentially exists in a bubble that insulates him from what he and his legion are actually doing. And when the legion returns, with the NCR unconquered, this bubble would burst. Not in the sense that he'd immediately feel guilt for the brutality and terror his nation has inflicted, but on the fact that if the legion can't conquer the NCR, then what is it all for? He fundamentally believes that in order for the Legion to survive, the NCR needs to be conquered, with the two societies merged by synthesis. Sure, we could argue that the Legion could just return at a later date to continue where they started. However, it had taken them four years to recuperate their losses after the first Battle of Hoover Dam. This may take even longer to rejuvenate, given the fact that with the addition of the Mojave, they have a larger territory to oversee. Kaiser also won't live forever and may not live to see the second invasion of the NCR. With Legatus Lanius at the helm, I don't see it really happening at all. Outwardly, Lanius has expressed desire to conquer California. However, privately, he states, What I felt in that struggle, I felt as I saw the map of the West. The West is a trap. The bear has already been caught in it, and it is dying. In any case, this has been a summary of what I believe would happen when the Legion invade the NCR. This was very speculative, as there was far less concrete source material to base this off, but I'd love to hear your opinions on what you think would happen.